Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Hushman. I'm a PhD student at Drexel University, and I'm working under Dr. Farnam Sober Region at uh, ASIM Lab, Advanced Sustainable Infrastructure Material Lab. Today, I want to discuss about the protecting mechanism of soy methyl ester polyesterine that we call it SMEPS as a concrete surface protector. Uh, uh, the presentation outline uh, is that uh, I want to discuss about the introduction, then uh, aim and objective. After that, I will discuss how we've done the uh, research on the experiment, then the result and discussion, the final conclusion, and also the future steps to our research. First, I want to uh, discuss about the problem. What is the problem? What is the solution? The problem is that we have a concrete slab. It could be pavement, it could be a concrete bridge. Uh, by uh, freezing and tying or uh, uh, application of the de-icing salt, the water and ions can penetrate it into the concrete and uh, will cause lots of problems to the concrete and also to the reinforcement if there's any reinforcement, such as the corrosion, the salt scaling. Uh, our solution is that to use a protecting surface material to limit the uh, fluid ingress so uh, there wouldn't be damages caused by the freeze and tying the ice and salt and also the corrosion. The material that we use uh, for the protecting surface is a soy methyl ester polyesterine, which is organic non toxic uh, material uh, which has high solvent capacity and high penetration depth. And soy methyl ester actually is a fatty methyl ester derived from the soybean oil and polyesterine is a polymer, an expansive uh, uh, polymer that we use. The uh, previous study that is done on SMAPS uh, actually showed that the application of the SMAPS on the surface of the cementitious material can decrease the water absorption, the damages caused by freeze and tying, the chloride penetration, and also the calcium oxychloride formation. The calcium oxychloride formation is the reaction product of the chloride and the calcium hydroxide that uh, inside the cement paste, which cause, uh, which produce the calcium oxychloride, which is expansive, which is bad for concrete and causes damages to the concrete. So what is our objective here? We, want, we know that previous studies showed SMEP as is effective as a concrete surface protector. We want to know, the question is that, how SMBPS does this protection? It's physical protection or chemical protection or the combination of the both. In terms of the physical protecting mechanism, we talk about how SMBPS molecule uh, fill the pores inside the cementitious material and changes the pore size distribution of the cement paste. And in terms of the chemical protecting mechanism, we want to know the SMEPS, which is a fatty metal ester with 5% uh, of polyesterine. If there is a reaction between SMEPS and uh, hydrated cement toltoid, and if the reaction product can help uh, in terms of the protecting the concrete and also the reinforcement. Uh, first, the sample preparation, we had a uh, three by six cylinder cement paste sample. We used uh, ordinary Portland type one, two cement with a water to cement ratio of 0.5. We cured the sample under ambient temperature for 90 days with plastic wrap. Then, then we cut the sample in half uh, and uh, we choose the cut surface as our uh, future study, as our future experiment, because we want to minimize the carbonation during the curing time. We put a plastic wrap uh, to, because we want to put the SMPS on the surface. We want to make sure the SMPS is uh, on the surface of the material. We have, uh, we put one half sample as a control sample. And uh, by control, I mean, the cement paste sample that is not treated with anything and there's no SMEPS. The other is SMEPS sample that is a cement paste sample that is treated with SMEPS with the application rate of 130 square feet per gallon that we apply to the surface of the cement and with two doses. The experimental program, uh, as I discussed, we want to know the physical protecting and also chemical protecting mechanism. In terms of the physical protecting mechanism, we want to study the pore structure and pore size distribution. And for doing that, we perform dynamic wear pore sorption, DVS test. 
for the chemical protecting mechanism, first we want to know if there is any reaction between SNPs and hydrated cement paste. So we did isothermal calorimetry and uh, see if there's a uh, heat of reaction based, uh, between the SNPs and the cement paste. The other test that we've done, we know we, we want to know if something happening between the cement paste and the SMEPS, we want to know what's happening uh, and uh, what would be the reaction product. And we done the thermogravimetric test, TGA. The first result that I want to show you is the results of the DVS. Uh, the DVS is actually, we have uh, the sample, we cut the sample from one millimeter surface, we put it in the environmental chamber, and uh, in the DVS uh, chamber, and uh, we started from 97.5 relative humidity, and we decreases the relative humidity, and we measure the moisture content of the sample. And by doing that, and the desorption curve that we get here, you can see the blue one is the control sample, and the red one is the SMEPS sample. And as you can see, the, curve, the blue curve shifted down. It means as we have, as we apply the SMEPS, the moisture content is reduced. So the SMEPS fills the pores, and so we get less moisture content. The other thing that is very important here, we can relate the relative humidity by using an equation called Kelvin-Young-Laplace equation to relate that to the pore radius of the uh, pores inside the cementitious material. And that's the equation. And, and by doing, and by using this equation, we can relate the relative humidity to the pore radius. And the other parameters, I don't want to go into the details and uh, these are the constants. So we want to know how the pore size distribution is changed in the sample that we treated with SMEPS and the one without any SMEPS treated. Here is again, is the normalized moisture content and based on the pore ranges, we have, and we categorize the pores uh, in terms of less than one nanometer, one to two, two to five, five to 50, and more than 50 nanometer. By doing that, we understand that in, the pore radius ranges below the 50 nanometer in all the ranges, the pores at the control one, uh, the, pore, uh, the moisture content, which is actually related to the pore volume is reduced. But in a pore size uh, greater than 50 nanometer, uh, there wouldn't be any changes in the pores. It, uh, uh, now we understand that the SMEPS penetrated to the cementitious material, pour the surface, disconnect the pores, and uh, 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 deposit on the surface of the pores, reduce the pore size, and it will actually, the physical protecting mechanism that we are looking for, that reduces the uh, temperature, now we want to talk about the hydrated cement paste reacted with SMEPS. The thing is that we use silica sand, which is inner sand, we uh, mix it with SMEPS, and also we mix uh, hydrated cement paste with SMEPS. By doing that, we understand that we did uh, internal mixing isothermal calorimetry. You see, there, isn't, there shouldn't be no reaction uh, in, in terms of the SMEPS and urine sample. And uh, you see, we get a small peak here, which is based on, uh, which is technically the internal mixing of the, that is happening inside the uh, isothermal calorimetry cell. And this result shows that the SMP is reacted with hydrated cement paste. The other thing that we want to know, we want to know inside the hydrated cement paste, we have different hydrated, uh, we have different material. We have pore solution, we have gypsum, we have calcium hydroxide, and we choose these material to understand if there are reaction between SMPs and these material. And here you can see the thermal gravimetric, the TG results of the SNPS calcium hydroxide, gypsum and pore solution. We know these are the results that we are looking. Then we mix the SNPS with calcium hydroxide. We get the results here in my next slide. We get new peaks and also a couple of overlap peaks. And again, the same thing for the pore solution and the gypsum. And also we did uh, the TG and the hydrated sample paste that is treated with SMPS. By doing that, we understand that 
at the temperature range of 150 to 200, 400 to 500, 550 to 700, we get new peaks and also a couple of overlap peaks. These are the reaction products that's happening between the SMPS of the calcium hydroxide and also the poor solution and also the gypsum. The conclusion is that in terms of the physical protecting mechanism, we see the SMPS molecules fills the pores, deposit the pores, and in some um, uh, pores uh, less than, uh, let's say, one nanometer, it may disconnect the pore networks and also may induce repulsion forces that actually we don't see the moisture, uh, too much moisture content. In terms of the chemical protecting mechanism, we understand SMPS reacted with calcium hydroxide which produce a hydrophobic film binding to the surface of the calcium hydroxide. It also reacted with pore solution, which uh, produced the sodium and potassium fatty acid salts, and also we reacted with the gypsum. And this reaction also help us to mitigate the formation of the desired compound, compounds in terms of the chemical protecting mechanism. For the future work, we want to optimize the dosage of the polyest uh, polyesterin that is inside the material. Also, we want to know the microstructural and also the durability, the long-term effect of SNPS in the sample. Thank you.